All right, we're gonna be approaching the longus coli in the deep anterior neck musculature. So first thing I'm gonna do is just orient ourselves with a couple of the other muscles and where we wanna be approaching, as well as some safety. Um, so the first thing that I always kind of address with my client on the table is depending on their comfort of approaching the anterior neck at any time they may stop. So you have to give them the power to say stop. But if your hand is basically over top of the anterior neck musculature, that might be really, really tricky. So you're going to be using hand signals. So they need to be able to put up their hand to say stop. This is a no, or this is a two, or thumbs up. This is okay, or thumbs down. This is painful. Um, so that's how I like to communicate with my person. The next thing that we will be moving the trachea around a little bit, which is uncomfortable for a lot of people. Um, so I like to do as a tester. So there's two ways that you can kind of approach this. One, I'm using the pads in my fingers. I'm reaching across to the opposite side and I'm gonna do a gentle pull towards me like so. I'm gonna release that. Again, I'm gonna try that again, a gentle pull towards me just to give them a second and see how that feels. Or the opposite, some people prefer not having hands across the front of the neck. So they prefer to use the back of their fingers, kind of where the nails are, um, to push away when they sink in. So again, from this side, pushing the trachea away from them to try and approach longus coli. Myself, personally, um, I like using my pads more than I do the sides of my fingers, but you really should communicate with your partner uh, which one they prefer. So I'm gonna be using the pad method um, versus kind of the back of my fingers. Uh, we never grasp both sides at the same time. Um, so even though I have my fingers and my thumb in this area, I'm going to be pulling with my fingers and then I'm gonna push with my thumb. I'm never actually using a full pincher grasp of the trachea at one time. There's always a release. Okay, so now that we've kind of oriented the trachea, uh, we're gonna be kind of seeing where the hyoid bone is, the trachea, and some of the musculature. So please make sure you've taken the time to palpate and assess their sternocleidomastoid which is running all the way along the edge here. You have done a little bit of warm up work to their infrahyoids along the side of the neck in this area. And you wanna be comfortable with knowing where is the carotid pulse and this artery. So by placing your fingers just to the side of the neck and sinking in, this will not be a hard pulse for you to identify, but we are never trying to occlude it during our palpation. So when you thinking that you're on top of the pulse, um, just make sure that you're not feeling your fingers going up and down, but it will be in a close proximity to where your fingers are working. So now that we've kind of talked a little bit about that, I'm going to be addressing the longus coli and longus capitis with palpation. I want to make sure my client understands the two movements because I need them to activate it once I'm in the area. So I'm gonna explain that to her now. First, if you could please start to lift your head up off the table, good, and back down. Uh, a minimal movement, so again, just start to lift your head, stop. That's about as much as I'm gonna need. And then when I'm looking for capitis, I'm actually gonna ask you not to open your mouth, but push your chin and using your head by tilting down exactly. So I'm gonna be using both of those two actions while I'm over top of the musculature um, to feel the activation of longus coli and longus capitis. At any time during this palpation, if you'd like me to stop, please let me know. Okay, so natural reaction again, she nodded her head, which is what happens to a lot of your clients. They're gonna to wanna to talk. So if they need to swallow, if they wanna say something, ask them to please raise their hand because it's an easier method for you without causing them any pain or discomfort. So I'm gonna place two or three fingers. I like a little bit more surface area. I never use one, so I'm always gonna use a little bit more. And I'm gonna rest my forearm on the shoulder. So in case, they start to tense up or feel uncomfortable. Um, I usually can feel that through the transfer of the shoulder instead of coming from above and my arm gets a little shaky. Okay, placing a couple pads, I'm gonna start by pulling the trachea over towards myself here. I'm assessing how easily it moves, if there's any crunching that goes along with it. And I'm gonna hold that for a couple seconds just to feel that movement. And then I'm gonna let it go back to neutral. And I'm just gonna check in. 
how did that feel? Was that comfortable for yourself? Okay, excellent. So we're gonna go back and we're gonna do the exact same thing. I'm going to pull over towards myself. And this time I'm gonna to start to sink my fingers down into the anterior aspect of the neck. And if you've pulled the trachea over medially enough, you should no longer be on top of the pulse. You should be medial to it, which is over top of longus coli. I'm unable to sink any further, so I believe I am onto this anterior C-spine musculature. And so I'm gonna ask for my partner to just start to lift that head up. Good, no more than that. And let's try that one more time to start to lift the head up. Good, and again, where are we at on our pain scale using a finger scale? About a two, excellent. So that's just a nice solid pressure. And I'm gonna go a little bit higher up towards that mandible with my finger pressure, and I'm gonna ask that you tuck your chin down, perfect. And is that also comfortable for you? Okay, good, so we're at a two. So palpation of this muscle, we're not actually feeling O's and I's, but if you watch really carefully with my fingers, I'm just doing a very gentle medial lateral cross fiber strum as I run down the musculature, heading towards the sternum. I'm feeling for tautness, I'm feeling for any kind of spasm with inside the muscle. The person might experience a slight increase in pain. And then I'm gonna go back up with my finger pads, heading towards the mandible and the base of the skull. You will not feel the insertion of longus capitis. So the only way that we're able to kind of tell the difference between longus coli and capitis to a very slight degree is utilizing cervical flexion versus capital flexion. Okay, let's try that one more time. Just tuck your chin down towards my finger. Perfect. And start to lift your head up a little bit. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to slowly release my finger pressure up and then allow the trachea to move back towards the center a little bit. And now I'm gonna make sure that they swallow a couple times just to make sure the hyoids feel okay. And how are we doing? Is there any pain with that? No, we finish? no. excellent, okay. A quick reassessment, I'm gonna go back in. I'm going to orient and move trachea left and right a little bit. It might feel a little bit different because we've only treated one side. And then I'm gonna ask this person to engage the longus coli. So what I'm gonna have you do is to tuck your chin down just a little bit perfect and lift your head so it just clears off the table and hold this position for me. And we're gonna hold that for 10 seconds. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and relax and bring your head back into the table. Good. And is there any pain as you're doing that motion? No. Nope. Excellent. Okay, so that's going to conclude my palpation of longus coli. Uh, and really, that's what's going to turn into treatment is just a very gentle cross fibering strum going up and down along the muscle. Uh, it's a great introduction to try and treat more hyoids and anterior sternocleidomastoid. But if your client is comfortable with it, then you can attempt to go a little bit deeper and attempt to palpate. Again, safety, do not compress directly down onto the carotid. Make sure they're comfortable with your hands on the anterior part of the neck, which side you want to approach it from, either cross body or on the same side, using a pain scale, using hand or finger numbers, and then always allow them to stop treatment at any time if they so wish. And that's going to conclude our palpation today.